Welcome back to Roche Education, this is Ed. If you want to know more about UWMC and how it can easily kill out Rocket in competition and discrepancies in the message sent out by Rocket, watch it to the end. So UWMC, I covered this one multiple times. Last time we covered even the income comparison between Rocket and UWMC and that was an amazing video. It's in the description below if you would like to watch that one. But today we're going to be looking a little bit of an insight to what's updated technical analysis where I see the point of view in terms of price and also regarding the Russell confusion that happened. So for UWMC here, one of the latest news is that Oakland County announces UWM as COVID-19 vaccination host site for residents. A lot of people saw this po post and thought, hey, it's not much, it's just something normal, nothing significant. But for Oakland County Health, it's going to be 1,000 to 3,000 residents per day, and that's massive. It's going to begin on April 2nd at the UWM Sports Complex. And the reason why I'm saying this is massive is because if you were to think about it, you're going on in terms of the vaccinations, you're going on towards the vaccines, you're excited to get them for most people, and you're seeing UWM uh, facilities or sports or whatever, sport complex, whatever it is, it gives you good uh, coverage. And you always need to look at good coverage, right? You're just seeing their logo. It brings a brand recognition towards uh, the vaccination center. And then on to the other news that we have heard before, for instance, the Prime Jumbo, which is our, which are back with up to 88 or 89.99% LTV and no MI required, up to $2 million, and that's significant unless you're in the California or New York area. Uh, $2 million barely gets you a shoebox size. But anyway, I'm just kidding. But yeah, for real, prices are insane. MBS recap, even stronger than yesterday, but confirmation is still needed. And this is the bonds walked their own path today with gains overnight holding fairly steady during the first part of the domestic session. Midday testimony from Powell Yellen. Powell and Yellen had no effect on the Treasury's MB or MBS, but a late day risk off move has bonds pushing well into their best levels of the day. 1.62% continues to hold as a floor and we need a strong break below there in order to add confirmation to the week's positive vibes. Those prospects may depend on the treasury auctions in the coming days as well as the month's ending trading environment. So quick thing about this one here, this is regarding uh, just general mortgage news daily news uh, and a higher, a higher percentage up, up higher than 1.62 in the longer run is actually better for things like UWMC in terms of bringing more revenue by showing strength in the economy. That's all that is. So just in case you had a bit of confusion there. And then we do have some SEC filings before I do discuss the Russell and the Rocket dilemma things going on and a bunch of things. So in terms of institutional buyers, it's been st still since my last video, nothing happened there. Insiders as well, things are looking still. Now, in terms of this offering here, a lot of people were great off. Now, this is as normal as a proceed for reverse merger. They always need to have things like 8K forms or S3 forms. In this case, it is an S8 form, which is quite normal after such reverse mergers or SPAC acquisitions. And as well, I did talk about this one before regarding their hedging strategy, which is here. Uh, regarding their hedging strategy, they are able to use quantitative risk management QRM platform to model the interest rate risk position. And QRM provides industry leading risk management principles, practices and models to empower clients to measure and manage all form of financial risk. QRM provides baseline historical fallouts models, which are supplemental with advanced modeling techniques and monitoring programs. Now, this is really massive for one reason. If the market was to crash tomorrow, the housing market to tank, UWMC doesn't go out of business because they are going ahead and hedging as well into their own strategy using risk management. And that's definitely something that is very bullish for a company such as this one for people that are worried about the 2007, 2008. I did have a video a while ago where I did talk with investor relations and it did mention this exact thing. You'll have to watch my previous video regarding that if you would like to know more about this one. And then we had the other question regarding the 10K form that a lot of people have been asking about. Now this 10K form or SEC filing is nothing more than an independent audit 
that confirms that EWMC has gone through basically their books correctly and this is their actual revenue, their assets and everything. So it just confirms everything that we've been, we know before. Total revenue was around $4.9 billion. In terms of net income, you're looking at $3.38 billion. That's for the year end, so 2020. And if you were to look, for instance, at a quarter per quarter as well, you'll find it very much in par to what we've seen in the last SEC filing regarding their earnings. So we can move on now towards the fiasco between the Russells and stuff and everything between. So uh, something happened interesting and the Russell stocks or the stocks that Russell inclusion for Russell 1000 and 3000 document by March 22nd, which was yesterday, uh, UWMC was removed. And... Basically, they did men they did follow up on United Wholesale Mortgage saying, based on the criteria inquired by Russell, we believe that they incorrectly concluded that they are there are not more than five percent of voting shares held by unrestricted holders, and in regards, we are going to attempt to correct with them. And see 5.5 point section for more. And basically, a lot of different folks have reached out to them and they said neither UWMC or any public company has any part in applying for or being contacted with regards to the inclusion of the indexes. Rather, it is determined unilaterally by the index itself and it's regarding incorrectly concluding that there are not more than 5% for voting shares held by unrestricted holders. And in that regards, we're going to attempt to correct the situation, but there's no assurance that it will be updated. Below is the link again, they're sharing the same link. And another one, the shares held by SFS and the founder's shares from Gores are locked up, but collectively represent approximately 90% of the vote because SFS voting percentage is capped at 79%. Our assumption is that Russell did not realize that there's a cap and have appealed the decision, but cannot guarantee anything will change. So it looks like they are actually very much proactive with Russell as well. And here's another document. Early this morning, several of us who contacted UWMC Investor Relations received a reply, now posted to UWM Lending Twitter account, which said that the Russell Index unilaterally determined, etc., etc. The email indicates that the FATSE Russell incorrectly concluded UWMC did not have at least 5% of the vote. According to UWMC Jan uh, January 21, 8k filing there are 1.6 billion dollar billion shares outstanding 103.1 million in class a and 1502 million in class d stocks ifb and his brothers hold approximately 93.6 and sfs holds owns 100 of class d stocks and they go as well showing that the public has 0.68 percent public voting right but there is here's the thing uwmc has a voting limitation clause that limits any one shareholder to a maximum of 79% uh, of the total voting power. So based on this limitation, the public voter voting rights would be greater than 5%. And this factor should not disqualify UWMC from inclusion into the Russell 1000. The question is whether Russell allows for these voting limitation. And from my history, from my understanding is that they would allow for this limitation because it's regarding 5%. And if they co collectively have 79% cap, it means it's capped at 79%. Period. There's no exactly on how that is going up uh, happens, etc. Regarding shares, it's more regarding the cap itself. So generally speaking, we're looking at perhaps some later on news regarding Russell 1000 and 3000 coming back on. And another thing is regarding towards the ultimatum that was mentioned. And I did go through that last video, and I think that ultimatum is actually important because what hap what's happening is that Rocket and the other company are breaking the fundamentals of exact operations of their competitors in an almost an unethical way by skipping the middleman altogether while not advertising that that's what they're doing. So in a sense, they're poaching these people. And we also got from Rocket's side a bit of a description. Now, if you do recall from the last one, UWMC said uh, more than 10,000 uh, of their broker channels or have um, basically gone with them and around 22 of 25, or sorry, I think it was around 23 of them have taken a stand with uh, 23 biggest lenders have taken a stand with UWMC against Rocket and another company. And here, Rocket sends a message on the 16th saying today matt ishby and united wholesale mortgage distributed a press release that was false and clearly mis misleading 
In the release sent to the media distributed to, bro distributed to brokers across the country, UWM claimed 10,000 brokers and shops are partnering with UWM, attempting to mislead the broker and the business community in order to show strength where little exists. The real factors are there, and hold on, just wait a second, because here's where things get interesting. After this one here, they say, to believe that 10,000 brokers owners bent the knee to UWM is laughable. Uh, honestly, first off the point, professionalism went out of the window, and language here is a bit laughable itself. Uh, I'm not sure what bent the knee in terms of a professional document regarding addressing something is there. It's basically just almost bickering. As Rocket Pro TPO, 22 of our largest 25 partners have rejected DWM's ultimatum and have elected to continue working with our company. And here's where things get laughable. Many of which did more business with UWM before they were forced to choose. Okay, hold on. Are you telling me out of the 22 of the 25 or out of your 25 largest partners, uh, you're talking about they did major businesses with UWM over Rocket and saw that your actual model is worse than UWMC and you're telling me that they're going over Rocket for just fundamentals? I'm sorry, it's business and when it comes to business, they're going to go off with what brings the most profit. So right off the bat, I start really picking on and seeing a little bit of discrepancies there that are a bit confusing in my perspective and that's my opinion. And so I'm not going to go through Further on, uh, I think that this is just a little bit laughable in that sense that they're saying even that their biggest 25 partners had more business with UWMC than Rocket. And so they're saying that their business model actually sucks and they have to cheat in order to get to there. That's a little bit laughable. And I think that right off the bat, we see that UWMC has a bit of an advantage here. And I start, uh, it's basically UWMC words versus Rocket. And it looks like by the wordings here and what they've chosen to go with seems a little bit off um, laughable in all sense. And honestly, for, for, for my perspective, they did go ahead and start posting all these things regarding, oh, these are the people. And honestly, this is the entire Rocket business plan is the Rocket emoji. Let's Rocket. This is all. And this literally brings an entire Rocket uh, business plan. They are more of pumping their own stock, and that's what they want to do. That's why they chose the Rocket name. That's why uh, they were planning for that IPO for the Rocket emoji. This is just, they're trying to be a meme stock. They did significant succeed in a while but in that sense i don't think that they are here for the long term and before moving on towards technical analysis if you would like to get more content like this here and get to know a bit more about uwmc make sure to subscribe and leave notifications on and if you'd like to join our discord server in the description below it's free you can talk about uwmc all day every day with me so let's jump right now towards technical analysis now towards the technical analysis, and this is not as important to due diligence, but it's quite important to know where your supports and resistances and key points are. Now there's not a lot of indicators here to use, so I'm going to skip the ones I can't use. And on the one day perspective, we see a lot of accumulation happening here on the sides. Above 9 bucks, things are always bullish. And you see on the MACD, it's trading a little bit sideways, it's highly oversold, ADX signifies that they're perhaps going to be another strong trend soon and there's a strong potential there and momentum is trading sideways now in terms of moving averages it does also show it's a little bit curving upwards which indicates another strong bullish movements and in terms of stochastic fast and stochastic slow it's showing that right now might be actually a time to buy where it's still it's flat it's accumulation zone exactly what i'm saying and in terms of Fibonacci retracements, we see a significant support lies at the 847 followed by the 724. Significant resistances are 923, 985, 1046, 1133, and 1245. And we need to go ahead and find the price line action supports. A very, very strong one at 844. Below there, we're looking at 826. Below there, 799. Below there, we're looking at 763. We're looking at 749 and 738 significant resistances we're looking at 872 and then above there you're looking somewhere around the 884 and then above there you're looking at 937 and you're looking at 979 1004 1056 and then you start going on around 1141 
and then up to 11.69 and then the 12.45. Comes to the question to Ed, what do you think is going to happen here? And I'm definitely going in long bullish onto the stock. I do definitely think that in terms of competition, they can easily blow their competition. They have an amazing team, especially with the chief technology officer that has been newly hired not a long time ago. Their team have a lot of experience on their belt. And I think this stock in the longer run will definitely see at some point 20 bucks in my opinion. And so for longer term, I'm happy to keep this one for a while. I mean, I didn't even sell around 1245, even though I was up around 50% of my position. I still believe that this one can easily go 20, 30 bucks in the longer term. And I'm fine keeping it for a year or two or five. I'm totally fine with it because it is an amazing portion, amazing industry to have, especially for this one on top of its industry. And now in terms of it, the dips below around seven bucks, man, I would love to pick some more. I honestly, one of my main regrets is I didn't pick up more at a cheaper level. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe and like, have a wonderful day.